And Pinky's gonna throw! She's still running. She's still breathing. There she is. She's still breathing. I can see the crankshaft spinning around and around. She's a phoenix. We couldn't believe our good luck to witness the uprising of the phoenix black and tan. In this episode, we're going to pick out a good news engine and confirm her replacement engine with a compression and a leak down test. Now, your name might be on the title. It might be parked in your garage, but I'm the owner because I'm the king of Miatas. First, the Royal Phoenix Uprising Ceremony out on the lawn here at Miata Mecca. I have a couple of local Smurfs to assist me, the village idiot, and the court jester. I better get going. The crowd is waiting on me. This is a Royal Proclamation, the Honorable Phoenix Bumper Bag Ceremony. As of this day, in the United Kingdom, Black and Tan, birthday 05 of 1992, number 8240. You are hereby gifted with the legendary title of the Phoenix Black and Tan and all the benefits that come with immortality. Restoration. We're going to pick out a good used engine from our engines inside the house here, or we're going to go outside and pick an engine from our garden of engines. In the garden of engines, we'll find one worthy for the Phoenix Black and Tan. We found a replacement engine for the Phoenix Uprising. Seems like she's excited to be risen again. Our first step is going to be to oil the engine before we can do our compression and leak down test. So let's get the valve cover off and get started. Once we get this last bolt on the valve cover broke loose, before we break the seal on the valve cover, we're going to get the spark plugs out of here. Now it's important for us to use compressed air to blow the spark plug holes out before any debris in there, before we get the plugs out of the head. Anything that's in there may fall into the combustion chamber and may become a disaster. So let's use some compressed air and blow out the holes. Take a look inside, make sure that there's nothing in those spark plug holes. Looks good, let's get the plugs out. When we're going to take the spark plugs out, you're going to notice that you're going to need a thin wall spark plug socket. Now on this socket right here, I've ground down the edge to make it a thin wall plug because it sits in, the spark plug sits into the recess and you have to have a the hex on the spark plug. Let's work with number one first. Number two. Good. Oh, but good. Don't see a big carbon build up on them. They look nice. Here's number four. Let's get number four out and take a look at it. Oh yeah, looks real nice. Number four looks good too. Spark plugs look clean. Don't see any problems with the spark plugs. Let's get that valve cover off now. 
Oh, there she is. Let's take a look at this engine we've picked out. Well, it looks like it's a 92. It's a 1600. You can tell it's the 1600 because the intake manifold slopes down here. And the 1800 comes out straight out. And 1600 slopes down. So it's the 1600. It's a 92 with about 86,000 miles on it. It came out of a wreck car. You can see it must have been a front ender because it broke off. You can see where it's broken off the uh, thermostat neck housing, that gooseneck that sticks out there. And it's the big nose crank. It's got the eight slots in the front pulley. Also of interest here is it's got a nice clean water jacket so there won't be much corrosion inside the engine. Probably well taken care of and we've been sitting now for about 10 years so our next step is going to be to oil it up. Let's take a look at the other side. You can see what we've done here. We've actually hooked up a starter to this end. You can see the starter there. And you can see that we put in a flex plate from an automatic so it'll fit in this engine stand. But we've got the starter hooked up so we can spin it over and run our tests. So the first step is going to be to actually drain anything that's in the engine out. To drain the engine oil, because the engine's in the stand now, what we've done is we've cut a box. And you can see we've cut some slots in the box, so it will fit over the engine stand. So now with a box like this, what we're going to do is we can put that right in there, and then set our drain pan right there. So we'll get our wrench out, and we'll drain the engine, see what we've got coming out. We've got a 19 millimeter wrench, and we'll get that on the drain plug there. Crack it. Let's see what we got here. See if there's anything in this engine. Oh yeah, we got something in it. We'll get that oil filter off. We've got a fresh oil filter here. What we're going to do is we're going to fill the oil filter up with oil. And that's going to help prime this engine. You remember this engine has been sitting for about 10 years. So we want to get her primed up. So let's put a little oil in that gasket there. I want to get it gone here and then we'll spin it on. There we go. We'll let that drain until it's just a drip. It looks like most of the oil is drained out now. You can see we're down to just a regular little drip. So we'll put that drain plug back in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to oil up the cylinders. We're going to use one of the mechanic's best friends and that's Marvel Mystery Oil. We're going to put a little bit of this into the combustion chambers and this has been the mechanic's best friend since 1923. We've got a little bit of this in a can here and what we're going to do is we're going to give each cylinder about two shots of this Marvel Mystery Oil. Get that hose down in the combustion chamber. One, two. One, two. This way we're going to oil up the cylinder walls so they won't run dry. Oil those rings up a little bit. Get down in that hole there. Alright. There we go. One, two. Okay. Next step is going to be we're going to pour that oil into the engine. But what we're going to do, we're going to pour it right on top of the camshaft. We're going to oil everything up. This is the same way you would do with a fresh build if you were building a fresh engine and going to start it. Best thing to do would be to pour the oil in just like this on top of the valve train. To oil that valve train up. There's one. Three more to go. And that makes four quarts. Next we're going to hook up our battery and our remote starter button to the starter we've got installed on the engine so we can spin it up. And when we spin the engine we're going to look to see the oil pressure come up. Since we don't have a gauge and it's not in the car, we're going to look for the oil actually to come up to the top of the engine and start oiling the camshaft. 
So we're going to bring a camera in. We're going to zoom in on that when it starts to happen. So let's go ahead. Well, before we do that, I'm going to remove this tape here. We want this engine to breathe now. We, we can't have a blockage in it. We want, we want it to have full flow of air. So we're going to, I'm going to use a screwdriver. I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to actually put it through the linkage here and hook it behind this one hose here. There we go. And that will give us full throttle, brand new wide open throttle here. Let all the air in so we can run our tests. So let's see how she sounds. engine we're going to watch for the oil to come up right here this is where the oil fill cap is we're going to see the oil come up right alongside the camshaft that means that the engine is well oiled and full of oil pumping oil up to the cylinder head and all's well so we can run our test let's zoom in now Go ahead, Pancho. We've got oil to the tops of the cylinders, so the camshaft, the, the engine is oiled now and running pretty free and pretty loose and it's time to do that compression check. We've got the throttle propped wide open and we're going to actually insert a hose, a compression test hose in here. It's actually a valve hose. We'll put that in and then we have our gauge. Now what, what's important, when we do the compression test, we're going to look at the first beat. The first beat of the engine, we want to see, oh, maybe about 90 pounds. That's a nice engine. And the first beat of the engine put out about 90 pounds. And then we're going to watch it through eight consecutive beats and see where the pressure goes. So let's start on number one right now. Here we go. about 220 on that one right now. Let's so release the pressure and go to number two cylinder. Okay, here's number two. And again, we're looking for that first beat and then eight, a count of eight. There we go. We got 210 out of number two. Number three cylinder. Three. And let's look at number four. Here we go. We got about 210 on number four. It looks good. Compression check looks good. The next test we're going to do is we're going to do our leak down test. And on the leak down test, we have to bring each cylinder up to top dead center on compression. And then we're going to run pressure into the cylinder. The gauge we're going to use is going to show up. We're going to put 100 pounds of pressure in the air line. And when we open it up, then we're going to see a percentage of leak down, how much of each cylinder is leaking. So we'll set that up and take a look at that next. The first step of the cylinder leak down test, and you work through each cylinder is individual. So we're going to start with number one cylinder. And the first step is going to be to bring the cylinder up to uh, top dead center, number one on compression. So we know that the a, a intake cam is going to be pointed at 9 o'clock and the exhaust cam is going to be pointed out at 3 o'clock. So let's use our bump start button to get it close. Here it comes. There it is. It's real close right now. We're going to put in our stick. We've got a mark on it. And we're going to turn it so we can just see Top dead center. Let's see. There we go. There we go. I'm going to say it's right about there. Now, if you have it a little bit off one way or another, as soon as you pressurize, put pressure on top of the piston, 
If it's not right on the top, if it's one way or another, then it's going to spin the engine. So let's see if we got it right. For the leak down test, we're going to put in our hose. You can see that we have 100 pounds of pressure now. And now we're just going to plug it in how much leak down we have. Remember, if we're off a little bit, it's going to spin the engine. Yeah, we were off a little bit. Got to bring it back to tap that center again. Okay, let's plug it in and see what we've got. We've got 100 pounds here on our gauge, 100 pounds coming in. And let's see how much percentage of leakage we have. Looks like our leakage right here is, it looks like it's about 5%. So we're doing pretty good. About 5% of leakage, that's good. So we'll move on to the next cylinder. Number two. Now if you were working on a V8 or something with the valve covers on it, and you couldn't see, you couldn't see the, the camshafts and the position of the lobes to tell you where top dead center was, you can actually bump it over and put your finger on the line here, this air line, and you can feel when it comes up, here it comes up on compression. So as soon as it starts to come up on compression, you can pull your line, put in your stick, and roll it around. Because we can see, because the valve cover's off, we can see that what we're coming up to right here is again the camshafts are in the correct positions and we're looking for that top dead center. Here it is. Going down, coming up, going down, coming back up. There we go. There it is, right there. Let's try number two. We got 5% leakage on number one. Now we'll go to number two. Got 5%. I'm going to say we got about 2% leakage on number two cylinder. Now we'll work to number three. Okay, let's try number three cylinder. And number three cylinder is. Looks like we got about 5% in number three also. Now we'll move on to number four. Put in our hose. Let's take a look at number four. Whoa, look at number four. Let's see if we got something stuck here. All the valves are loose. Look at number four. We got a leakage and it looks like about, oh, it's got to be almost 15% in number four. Now I wonder where it's coming out of. The intake? Not the intake. It's coming out of the exhaust. I got my hand over the exhaust and I can feel the pressure coming out of the exhaust. So the exhaust valve that's hung open. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tap on those exhaust valves and see if we can get them to lock down. It might be just a little rust, a little carbon or something built up on the valve. So we'll do that next. You can hear the air escaping through the exhaust valves on number four cylinder, and that's the reason for our 15% leak down on the cylinder. What I'm going to do, I've got a brass drift here, brass drift, so I don't hurt the, uh, the lash adjuster, the hydraulic adjuster, and I'm going to tap on the adjusters and see if we can get that valve to close up, because it may need to be debris on the valve. We're just going to tap on it. So a little general persuasion on those exhaust valves on number four cylinder. We'll run that leak down test again on number four and see what we've got. Oh, that straightened it right out. Brought it right around to zero or one percent. So it looks like we've got a great engine here for our Phoenix black and tan. And our next step 
was actually going to be to prepare the good used engine to go into the car. And to do that, we're going to reseal the engine. We're going to put on a new timing belt, water pump, cam seals, crankshaft seal, a rear main seal. That would be interesting for everybody to show a technique on a rear main seal. So stay tuned for our next episode in our series, Miata Mecca. Thank you very much. A leak down test, like a compression test, varies on different types of engines. These tests are not to be to compare one engine to another, but rather to compare the cylinders in an engine to each other. Miata normal leakage is 0 to 8 percent, but big block engines might be 10 to 15 percent leakage. Warm and cold engine also makes a big difference. The compression check exposes the engine's vitality. The leak down test pinpoints abnormalities. Cylinder leakage can happen one of three ways. You can have the valves leaking, an internal combustion leak, or a crankcase leak. If you have leaking valves, like in the video, first step is to look for a tight valve or lash adjustment holding the valve open. A valve adjustment on a shim over bucket Miata may fix your problem. Our Miatas, NA 1990 through 1997, have hydraulic self-adjusting lash adjusters. So in the video, I only needed to see if the lifters were loose and I could spin them in their holders. A leaking intake valve will disturb the intake manifold pressure, cause poor idle, and even make the intake manifold pop or backfire. An exhaust valve, an exhaust valve will idle smoother and high RPM, the problem will seal, seem to disappear. The spark plugs will start to load up with carbon. An internal combustion leak, a head gasket, or head or block crack, when pressurized, will push coolant out of an open radiator cap. The leak can also come from out of a neighboring cylinder spark plug hole, and that's where the pressure and the air leak is actually transferred from cylinder to cylinder. The crankcase leak. Air leaking from the valve cover breather hose is coming from worn piston rings or if it's real bad, it indicates a broken piston. There are a couple of cautions to be taken during these tests. Remember when you hook up the line pressure, the engine can spin like in the video. If a wrench is left on the crankshaft bolt, the bolt can loosen up or even break. If you have an internal coolant combustion leak, when you pressurize, a fountain of scalding hot coolant could come out of the open radiator cap. So the safety rules are safety rules remove all tools used to spot top dead center. Number two, place a wet towel over an open radiator cap during the test. Now you can create a poor man's leak down tester by removing the Schrader valve from the compression gauge hose. Then use airline pressure. Look and feel for air leaks. During this video we showed how to oil prime a used replacement engine. The same procedure is used on a fresh build or even an oil cooler install. The rule is do not start the engine until you can see oil come up to the camshaft from the removed oil filter cap hole. Remember, make no whoopee till she is primed. Hey, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you during the next episode, Miata Engine Reseal.
transmission will zoom, zoom. We'll try to push the clutch, keep the gas pedal down. See the rear wheels spinning around. Another gear, another squeal. Starting to drift, power slide, I feel. Radio belts wrapped around our minds. 